John Lennon made a few enemies in his lifetime, which isn't all that surprising when you consider his enormous influence on popular culture. With the Beatles, he was one half of perhaps the greatest songwriting partnership of the 20th century. As a solo artist and activist, he served as an ambassador for peace in an era of turmoil and conflict. As an individual, he was never far from controversy. Lennon spent his life under the spotlight, the knock-on effect of which was that even passing comments were assigned great significance, as was the case with his Bigger Than Jesus interview, which made him the enemy of every Christ-loving individual from England to America's Bible Belt. One of the benefits of Lennon's comments being so meticulously documented, however, is that we are able to see how his views changed over the course of his career, such as his opinion of his peers. We've scoured the archives to bring you a list of the individuals Lennon, at one point or another, took a disliking to. As you'll discover, Lennon didn't hate these artists in an absolute sense, he simply took a disliking to what they appeared to represent, and even that was subject to change. With that said, let's begin. Up first, it's Paul McCartney. Lennon's complicated relationship with Paul is well documented. From their early days in Liverpool to the Beatles split in 1970, John and Paul were joined at the hip, writing songs eyeball to eyeball in cramped tour buses and hotel beds. Their relationship became increasingly fractious from 1968 onwards, though the seeds of their resentment were likely planted long before. Things came to a head in 1971, when they started writing songs to attack one another, following the acrimonious disbandment of the Beatles, for which McCartney was being blamed at the time. It began when McCartney released a vengeful number called Too Many People on his 1971 album Ram, in which he flings multiple tentative insults at Lennon. On learning of these, the bespectacled rocker retaliated with How Do You Sleep? featuring an equally miffed George Harrison on guitar. The song was not just an attack on McCartney's family, but a swipe at his greatest contributions to the Beatles' output. Take the line, The only thing you'd done was yesterday, a reference to McCartney's celebrated song from Help. Lennon then adds, And since you've gone, you're just another day. Next up, it's Blood, Sweat and Tears. Despite spending years at close quarters with the UK, and US chart systems, John Lennon rarely listened to the top 10. He told Rolling Stone in 1971, Only when I'm recording or about to bring something out will I listen. Just before I record, I go buy a few albums to see what people are doing, whether they have improved any or whether anything happened, and nothing's really happened. When asked by Rolling Stone if he liked anything at the top of the charts, Lennon held nothing back flashing out at one of the year's most prominent rock outfits. I don't like the blood, sweat and tears shit. I think all that is bullshit, he began. Rock and roll is going like jazz, as far as I can see, and the bullshitters are going off into that excellentness which I never believed in. It's possible Lennon was disgruntled by the fact that Blood, Sweat and Tears' self-titled album won the Grammy Award the Beatles' Abbey Road was up for, though it's hard to say that for sure, Either way, Lennon seems to have regarded the group as the very antithesis of the avant-garde of rock and roll. Another name who's felt the wrath of Lennon's tongue is folk hero Joan Baez. In that same 1971 Rolling Stone interview, Lennon named two folk musicians he simply refused to listen to. His comments came after the interviewer made the mistake of comparing Lennon's working-class hero to the work of Bob Dylan, a comparison that always drew a bad response. I never liked the fruity Judy Collins and Baez and all that stuff, Lennon went on to claim. He also said, so the only folk music I know is about miners up in Newcastle or Dylan. In that way, I would be influenced, but it doesn't sound like Dylan to me. Does it sound like Dylan to you? The interviewer subsequently backtracked, claiming that only the instrumentation seemed Dylan-esque. Next up is the one and only Frank Zappa. On one level, Lennon related to Zappa. In Lennon Remembers, he expresses his hatred of critics while shunning those who failed to respect his genius. To illustrate this far from modest point, he compares himself to Frank Zappa, who at the time was practically synonymous with artistic integrity. Lennon said, 
Zaka is there screaming, look at me, I'm a genius, for fuck's sake. What do I have to do to prove to you sons of bitches what I can do and who I am? And don't dare fucking criticize my work like that. You don't know anything about it, fucking bullshit. Lennon continued, I know what Zappa is going through, and a half. I'm just coming out of it now, just fucking hell. I just have been in school again. I've had teachers ticking me off and marking my work. If nobody can recognize what I am, then fuck them. However, Lennon was frequently distrustful of overt pomposity, perhaps regarding it as a tool by which an artist might demonstrate their supposed superiority, which is perhaps why Lennon also remained hesitant about Zappa's work. I admire Zappa a bit, he said, for criticizing him for being a fucking intellectual. This one might come as a bit of a surprise. Bob Dylan was an important influence on Lennon, who started adopting elements of the singer-songwriter's introspective songcraft in the early 1960s, giving birth to watershed albums like Rubber Soul. The pair also crossed paths on numerous occasions. Indeed, it was Dylan who introduced Lennon to the wonders of grass, another powerful influence on John's songwriting. Lennon was balmy about Dylan for many years, but his adoration eventually soured. In 1979, Lennon recorded a long rambling monologue about the state of pop music, in which he lambasts Dylan and his new album, Slow Train Coming, the first of his Born Again albums. He wants to be a waiter for Christ, Lennon, a strident atheist, says, I've got to serve somebody, chuckling to himself. The backing is mediocre, he adds, the singing's really pathetic, and the words were just embarrassing. <laughs>